Hi everyone, thanks for listening to my presentations. Today I'll be talking about pegylated interferon. Pegylated interferon alpha 2a to be specific. And someone will ask me, why this? Yes, remember I have been talking about liver in the last four or five presentations. And I'm not yet done, okay? We will need pegylated interferon. By the time we start talking about hepatitis B, hepatitis D that cannot survive on its own without the assistance of hepatitis B, the treatment will need pegylated interferon. So, is it not wise to know now about pegylated interferon alpha 2A before we get into? discussion or interaction or presentation as per hepatitis B and hepatitis D and hepatitis C where we may or may not need pegylated interferon. I think it's wise. With that in mind, let's go. Pegylated interferon could be Pegasi. Pegasi is pro click and it belongs to the class of medications known as interferon. Pegylated interferon uses. Useful in chronic hepatitis B and hepatitis D and also chronic hepatitis C. It could appear in form of solution that could be given subcutaneously. For example, Pegasus 180 microgram per mil appearing in one mil will contain benzene alcohol and polysorbate 80. Pegasus proclic 135 microgram per 0 0.5 mil. Administration. Peg interferon over 2A could be administered subcutaneously. And you could use the abdomen or thigh, and you have to rotate the injection site. Those who have been given insulin subcutaneously before will understand this better. So you can give this medication the same day at the same time every week. What are the possible adverse reactions? Fatigue, headache, rigor, anxiety. Irritability, depression, dizziness, pruritus, growth suppression, particularly in those whose epiphyseal plates have now closed, that is, children that are still growing, growth suppression, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain. Other adverse reactions are neutropenia. That is why you need to know the absolute neutrophic count level. Increase ALT, myalgia, or atragia, as if you are given certain, right? Fever, memory impairment, thrombocytopenia, on account of which the individual could start bleeding, right? Lymphocytopenia, and they like to say increased bacterial infection. Other adverse reactions could include epistasis. Remember, someone who has thrombocytopenia, why are we not going to see epistasis? Nasopharyngitis, dyspnea, naphylaxis, and on account of which this medication will be contraindicated. Aggression, hyperglycemia. So, someone is diabetic and having hepatitis B or chronic hepatitis C or hepatitis D is imposed on hepatitis B and you want to choose alpha interferon 2A, remember, keep an eye on the glucose. Mania. What are the possible contraindications? Hypersensitivity to peg interferon alpha 2A. Once that has occurred, no peg interferon alpha 2a and that will manifest in form of angioedema, urticaria Stephen Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis. Autoimmune hepatitis is another contraindication and of course hepatic decomposition in liver cirrhosis. 
And please, when you have ribavirin, don't give peg interferon at the same time. Also, parts of contraindications will be men with pregnant partners. Okay, men whose wives are pregnant right now, no peg interferon for them. Patient with hemoglobinopathies like sickle cell disease or thalassemia, no peg interferon. No didanosine at the same time, just as you watch your back when you are giving a bathroom, okay? And of course, have a sensitivity to a sericea coli derived products. One, peg interferon alpha 2A can aggravate fetal or life threatening neuropsychiatry disorders. From adverse reactions, we talk about aggression, we talk about depression, we talk about mania, then why are we not going to be concerned? It could lead to fatal, life threatening neuropsychiatry disorders. It could worsen autoimmune diseases, okay, and could make ischemic conditions to be worse. And it could promote infectious diseases. Already we've learned that there will be neutropenia, lymphocytopenia, so overwhelming or increased bacteria infections. We've learned about that already. There is likelihood of bone marrow suppression. You no, know, a plastic anemia here, severe cytopenias, then increase infection, bleeding, and, and so on. Rebivering can worsen these conditions above. So be cautious while combining peg interferon with rebivering. In gastrointestinal tract, there's likelihood of hemorrhage. Of course, we we'll learn that there will be thrombocytopenia, right? And Increase or worsening of ulcerative colitis and ischemic colitis. Of course, it's going to worsen autoimmune conditions. And when it comes to liver, a party decompensation and death could occur, particularly in liver cirrhosis or chronic hepatitis C or HIV with antiviral agents. Pregnant of her own is not good under this sudden situation. Okay, it could lead to pancreatitis, pulmonary effects, hypertension, supraventricular tachycardia, myocardial infarction, hypo or hyperglycemia, increased ALT flares in hepatitis B patients. In this situation, then you have to decrease the dose or discontinue the medication if the decreased dose is not reducing the level of ALT. Because ALT is giving clue that there is injury to the liver. And when the injury you know, is persistent for a long period of time or is overwhelming, then liver failure will set in. In ophthalmological world, there is likelihood of retinopathy, decrease or actual visual loss, macular edema, optic neuritis. And of course, retina detachment. Still on warning, be careful in renal impairment if creatinine clearance is less than 35 mL per minute. Not to be used in persistent seizures disorders. Be cautious in thyroid disorder, on account of which you need to know the value of thyroid stimulating hormone and T4. Be careful in growing cues. Why that? It surprises growth, okay? So that you won't get sued later in life that you're responsible for the short stature or sh the, the short height. And of course, in elderly, be careful. Examples. We have to do hepatitis B genotype before administering our PEG interferon alpha 2A. And why that? Because hepatitis B virus genotypes A and B 
will likely gain hepatitis B envelope antigen than non-A and B genotypes. If hepatitis B is co-infected with hepatitis deadly virus, that is hepatitis D infection, because hepatitis D cannot complete its replication without the presence of hepatitis B virus. Don't worry, I'll go into details of all this in subsequent presentations. Peglitian interferon is the drug of choice in the face of hepatitis D infection co-infected with hepatitis B virus. Okay, drug-drug interactions. Contact your pharmacist or your clinical pharmacologist. Why that? The list is pretty long. And I don't know what the patient might be on right now or what they might be on later on. I cannot go over the entire list. Please contact your pharmacist or your clinical pharmacologist. But I can categorically state one of those contraindications right now here, not in pregnancy, please. Monitoring. Get the laboratory investigations done for hematological parameters every one to two weeks. Thyroid stimulating hormone every 12 weeks. Okay, that's every three months. We must know the CD4 count the thyroid hormone and T4, creatinine, absolute neutrophic can, complete blood can, white blood cell can, glucose and platelet. And of course, we'll have to screen for human cloning gonadotrophin to rule out pregnancy in all women of childbearing age before commencing the medication. Magnesium of action. Proteins produced by nucleated cells with antiviral, antiproliferative, and immunoregulating activity will be found here. We have 16 subtypes of alpha interferons. Interferons have a high affinity cell service receptors with which they can induce gene transcription. Interferons can inhibit cellular growth and increase phagocytic activity of macrophages. Can also enhance cytotoxicity of lymphocytes for target cells. Chronic hepatitis B virus, we have interferon alpha 2A, 180 micrograms of cutaneously every one week for 48 weeks. In pediatrics, if there is chronic hepatitis B virus with positive envelope antigen and the individual is greater than three years old or is an adolescent, we can administer 140 microgram per meter square every week for 48 weeks. We can increase the dose up to 180 microgram as the maximum. In hepatitis C infection, please kindly discuss with your pharmacist because there's controversy on whether or not to give this medication in case greater than five years. If you are allowed to give this medication, then in hepatitis C, genotypes 1, 4, 5, and 6, you can treat for 48 weeks. In hepatitis C, genotypes 2 and 3, you can treat for 24 weeks. Watch your absolute neutrophic count in case of neutropenia and watch for the platelet value very closely in thrombocytopenia because of possible overwhelming infections that could kill patients or bleeding that could cause a lot of damages, including death. With that, I've come to the end of this presentation. PEG interferon alpha 2A is useful in liver related pathology, like we've gone through chronic hepatitis B or B and D or hepatitis C. And that is why I have decided to have this publication at this point in time because 
we are now moving in to the pathology that could be picked in the liver, the more. Thanks for listening. Remember to share. Remember to subscribe. And there will be more presentations on the largest organ in the body called the liver.